Good evening and welcome to the Midlands Board of Education record schedule meeting for September 24th, 2012. This is Baker. Would you call roll, please? I'd be happy to. President Mall. Here. Vice President Wasserman. Here. Secretary Baker. Treasurer Ole is not here tonight. Me um, Member Branstad. Here. Member Gordon. Here. And Member Kaminsky. Here. Okay, um, the consent agenda, as you all have probably seen, is uh, rather extensive this evening. So if you have anything that you would like uh, to ask a question on or have removed from the consent agenda, please indicate so indicate uh, uh, so that I know that uh, we have a question. If not, I'll get started. Uh, 2.1 is the approval of minutes from the last meeting on Monday, September 10th, 2012. 2.2 is the staff members announced their resignation effective dates indicated. Uh, 2.3 is the uh, following persons that were recommended for employment. 2.4 is uh, simply a change of the effective date of those hires, and so that's to be noted. 2.3 is the administration's approval, uh, seeking approval on the Bumgard Corporation contract for licensing. Uh, 2.6 is the administration seeking approval to deliver a purchase order for PC Mall of Inc. Uh, out of Virginia on a purchase administration. It's on 2.7 is seeking approval to deliver purchase order to Unique Software Corporation of Egan, Minnesota is 2.7. 2.8 is the bids are recently received from electronic security vendors to provide access to control expansion for uh, four exterior doors. 2.9 is the bids have been accepted and tabulated for AccuTemp convection steamer for Jefferson Middle School. 2.10 uh, is a, a part of our exploratory process for our new tech high school piece um, for Mr. Sh uh, Shadig. 2.11 is approval of the payments of the school board's uh, bills for the July and August. 2.11b is the investment report for July and August. 2.11C is the listing of purchase orders exceeding $3,000 for months of July and August. And 2.11D is a listing of purchase card trans <coughs> transactions exceeding $3,000 for July and August. So move approval of item 2.1 to 2.11D. Support. Moved by Mr. Washman, supported by Dr. Kaminsky. Any, any <coughs> questions? If not, I just have a comment. Sure. Yeah, on uh, item uh, 210, um, just with the, um, I, I know with the FFO meeting minutes and with the meetings that we've had at the, at the CAS committee meetings, I know that the, um, it's customary for a lot of the new tech uh, exploration to actually dedicate a person. And, you know, it's customary to have that type of resource towards that. So I feel comfortable with, uh, you know, with uh, you know, reviewing, look at the process map and so forth. And so I'm just excited that we can move and maybe have somebody more dedicated time-wise to go to that. Yeah, and I mentioned, um, John alluded to this, but even more directly, this recommendation has the support of the FFO and the Curriculum Alignment Special Services and Study Committee. Can I clarify, uh, the other, we have a lot of the consent agenda. <laughs> yes, we do. To clarify, <laughs> a number of these purchases are related to the iPad uh, yeah, piloted hi. initiative that we have going on. And then the vast majority, and perhaps even all of these, are included in a budget that the board has adopted already and their adoption of the general fund. Right. So it's not a surprise to the no. board. It's just the specific that we bring throughout the year. And, uh, it looks as though the technology area has been very busy lately, so that's a good thing. So, um, it, But not a, nothing that uh, was a surprise, and thank you for that explanation, and thank you for comments, Dr. Kaminsky. Yep. So we have a motion on the table to accept the consent agenda. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, request to address the board. If there is anybody in the viewing audience, the immediate viewing audience, that would like to address the board, it now would be your opportunity. If not, we will close that opportunity and move on in our agenda. Thank you. Recommended for action. Mrs. Klein on our audit 2011-12. Yes, and I believe you have a copy of the presentation, the audit itself, and the single audit of federal programs in front of you. So while we're getting set up here, I'll take this opportunity to introduce 
Mari McKenzie. Some of you have known Mari from previous years. Mari is our principal auditor from Yo and Yo, and she's going to present the results of our 11-12 audit. Just as a reminder, we begin a fiscal year with a, bo a board adopted budget in June, modify it a couple of times as we go, and then when the fiscal year ends on June 30th, we turn around in July and in about the third week have our auditors on site so that we can wrap up the books for the year and move on into the next year. Uh, so with that, I'll let Mari walk you through the results of our 11-12 audit. Thank you. Good evening. It's my pleasure to present Midland Public Schools 2011-12 audit results. Um, as Linda mentioned, we did provide the district with four documents, um, the presentation, the blue financial statements and auditor's report, the single audit report, and a governance letter. We have reviewed the details of the financial statements in the single audit with the administration. Um, we've also reviewed these items with the FFO committee. And tonight we're going to just take a look at the highlights. Fiscal management continues to be a challenge for school districts across the state of Michigan. Funding uncertainties and many more laws and regulations to comply with. Midland Public Schools has continued the tradition and demonstrated prudent fiscal management as it continues to position itself for the future. I want to talk a little bit about the audit process. Um, we do have auditors who come on site for a couple of days before the end of the school year, and then they come for an additional week um, after the school year has ended. And while they're here, um, they're looking really at three items. They're looking at the financial statements, taking a close look at the numbers. Um, are the numbers appropriate for the activity that occurred during the year? Um, internal controls. Internal controls, they center around accurate financial reporting. So we want to make sure that the processes that the district has actually provide accurate information. And we ought to also want to make sure that the assets are protected um, and safe from fraud. When we deal with the area of compliance, we're looking at compliance with basically laws and regulations and the grants that you have. So the federal government and the state government um, have provided us with the um, areas that they want audited by auditors. So that's what we're taking a look at. Throughout the district, we observed a culture of excellence, demonstrating honesty and high ethics. For the financial statements, Yo and Yo has issued an unqualified opinion on Midland Public Schools financial statements. This is equivalent to an A, an excellent score. We determine that the district's financial information is properly accounted for. I want to take a look at the balance sheet. The balance sheet is a snapshot of the assets, what the district owned, and the liabilities, what the district owed and the fund balance, the net between the two, at the end of the school year. So on June 30th, within your governmental funds, you had $22.6 million of assets, $6.9 million of liabilities, with a net of $15.7 million. Now you can see on the top we have the major funds. On the general fund, um, this is your general operations. So we'll find most everything here that relates to education. Um, there are also funds for your food service, kindergarten complement, um, bookstore, 
And then you also have a plant repair, maintenance, and equipment, and then special projects fund. And I should mention your other major fund is sinking fund. And those major funds are determined um, by size. This next one, the Statement of Revenues, Expenditures, and Changes in Fund Balance, this is the actual activity. So during the year, we had $84 million of revenue, $87 million of expenditures for a $2.9 million shortfall. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the general fund, the decrease in the sinking fund, um, is related to winding down um, projects as you're um, using, using your sinking fund dollars. So let's focus on the general fund. Once again, this fund is used to record your general operations of the school district pertaining to education, those items that are not required to be in a separate fund. One of the tools that the district uses is a budget. They use it for both planning and then also monitoring the activity. The budget itself um, is amended during the year. Um, and it takes into account new information. I want to go back one. Here it is. Um, as you can see, we have an original budget and a final budget. Um, the items affecting the revenue this year um, in your budget included a settlement of the MCV taxable value appeal, one-time EduJob federal dollars, incentive state dollars, and a capital lease for copiers. None of these items were known in June before the school year started. And then on the other side, we can see that the um, expenditures also changed um, $1.2 million. And this included your capital lease for copiers, reduction in utility costs after an unusually mild winter, and then also technology projects were delayed or deferred to future years. We can see that actual revenues were $80 million actual expenditures, 81.2 million. And you can barely see, um, but your revenues, the percentage difference, you were right on. Um, your expenditures, um, the actual was actually 0.6% um, less than what was budgeted, um, very closely budgeted. Then if we look at um, this year compared to last year, your revenues in 2010-11 were actually $83.8 million. This year, they were slightly under $80 million. This is an actual decrease of $4.6 million. If we look at the expenditures um, very close um, to what they were last year, um, this year 81.4 million, I'm sorry, last year 81.4 million, this year 81.3 million. Um, so the, rev the expenditures are flat, however, we're still seeing decreases in revenue. If we look at a pie chart so we can just see how, how your revenue um, is in the district, the blue represents your state dollars and your property tax dollars. And those are combined to, rep to represent um, basically the dollars that are related um, to your foundation. And they total 88%. A year ago, they were at 91%. Um, you can see remaining 2% federal, interdistrict 6%, and other 
So very dependent on the state in your foundation formula. Here is another look at your revenues. Um, if we go back to 1995, this is the first year of Proposal A. Um, revenues were approximately 32 percent more in 2008 than they were in 1995. But as you can see, the revenues have decreased each year since then. If we also look at the general fund expenditures, the blue represents salaries and benefits. So your salaries and benefits last year made up 83% of your general fund expenditures. And that's consistent with last year. We have purchased services at 5%, supplies and materials 5%, other 3% and capital outlay at 4%. And when I look at um, other school districts, looking at their composition of um, expenditures, uh, the salaries and benefits um, are typically between 78 and 85 percent. So um, you're right in line uh, with the other districts. Um, once again, uh, we can look at the expenditures. Looking at 1995, they were 45 percent more in 2008 than they were in 95. And then you can see uh, the district's efforts to um, to work within the revenue constraints. Um, so those expenditures are slightly decreasing also. And one of the things, if you look at the majority of your um, expenditures are in the area of instruction, which is the blue, and support is the green. Um, one of the things that as the district goes forward and um, looking at the revenues that are available, looking at the property taxes, your state aid, looking at availability of federal dollars. Uh, we need to keep an eye on what the revenues per student are and what the expenditures per student are. And um, as you can see, the green represents the revenues. So in years where the revenues, the green and the red, are very similar, um, pretty much we're at break even. Um, where green is the upper um, point, that is where revenues exceeded expenditures. And then where the green is below is where it um, is less than the expenditures. But keeping that relatively close together um, um, will help to um, maintain your fund balance. One of the things that um, as we look at school districts and we look at their um, the health of the districts, we look at the unrestricted spendable fund balance. Right now, that's at 15 percent of your expenditures. Um, if we look at it, and we often will look at it as a number of days um, for operations, if we use the calendar of 365 days, um, the fund balance would um, keep you solvent for 55 days. If we use the school calendar of 174 days, we're looking at 26 days. I wanted to touch briefly on the internal controls. And um, this year, we did not identify any material weaknesses. 
And then if we look at the area of compliance, um, we looked at two major programs this year, Title I and Improving Teacher Quality. And we did not find any <laughs> material noncompliance, um, nor did we find any noncompliance. On the governance letters is required communication and um, the Cliff Notes version indicates that we did not have any difficulties um, during the audit um, as far as getting information or um, reviewing the financial information. Um, that is the summary of the audit results for the 2011-12 school year. Um, do you have any questions? Questions, Amari, from the board. No questions, but uh, well, maybe a question, but more of a comment. Um, Maury's, I've been through this a number of years on FFO <coughs> and looking for fraud, deceptive practices, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do you want to comment at all, maybe a little deeper, on on how um, how you have not found things of that nature and how the controls stifle that? Right. Um, one of the things that um, as auditors and as a school board and as management of the district, um, very concerned um, about keeping your assets stay safe. We want to make sure that the cash is used um, to support the district's programs and um, not be used for other purposes. And in today's day and age, unfortunately, we're finding theft um, in too many places. So there, during the audit, um, there's a awareness that anything may lead us to um, potential theft. Um, so during the audit, what we do is we look at those controls that will prevent um, that from happening and looking at controls that if it does happen that it will be discovered um, by the district so that appropriate action can be taken. And during our testing and our evaluating and looking at areas that are susceptible to theft, um, we look at um, the athletics, game receipts, um, cash. Cash is easier to steal sometimes than it is to, to take a desk or a table um, from the building. Um, so we look, we look at what the controls are, what's happening, how many people are actually counting, who's aware of what's happening. Um, we also look at um, purchasing carts. They're relatively new to school districts. We find that purchase orders and um, approval of expenditures, uh, those systems have been around for a long time and typically function well. So we try to look at new areas. So purchasing cards, um, electronic transfers that don't go through the typical approval process. You have a different process for that. So we were looking at those processes also. And um, we did find the controls um, to be to be very adequate and um, and being used um, to 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 protect the district. Thank you. I, I'll just comment for the board and for the public. It is critically important to this board member that we have very accurate books, very fraud free, and we've had a history of that. Uh, Linda, thank you. Congratulations, Carl. Thank you, and all our employees. Thank you. Because uh, if we can't be credible about the dollars we have to spend on our kids, then we're going to make wrong judgments and wrong decisions about our kids. So to me, it's very important these are credibly done and done well. And thank you, as an outsider opinion looking in, to tell us 
that's where we're at. And I, I really appreciate Linda and everybody else's work in the district to keep us there. I think it's important for our uh, audience to understand also that when Mari comes in and meets with the finance study committee of the board, uh, there's a period of time where Linda and Gary and I are asked to leave the meeting and the auditors have a private meeting with the Board of Education. That allows you to ask any questions, if you have any suspicions. I, I don't know what goes on in there. You're not obligated to share that. But that is just another example of the check that's there um, that takes place on an annual basis. So it's good information for our public to know. Other questions or comments? Mm -hmm. I have a. Uh, one question and one comment. The comment first, Mari, is as, as usual, a great job, and um, I, we always look forward to the unqualified uh, uh, piece in the beginning of this. Um, but I do have a question about the fund balance with respect to the district's uh, finance and, and overall health of the district and what your opinion, your professional opinion would be of our current fund balance and what that looks like as far as moving into the future. As the district's moving into the future, we still have many unknowns. It has settled a little bit, your federal and state dollars. But um, right now, they're looking very close at the State Aid Act. So there is a possibility that what that looks like today may change tomorrow. Um, so, I ha so when I'm evaluating fund balances, I'm looking at that piece number one, the uncertainty. But I'm also looking at the cash flow. And um, we end June. We collect, we're still collecting money for last year during July and August to pay for um, summer pay for your teachers and for summer benefits. Um, the first state aid payment that you actually get during the school year is in October, October 20th. Well, school starts the end of August, 1st of September. Um, and we're already starting to pay the teachers. We do get some property tax money, which helps. But there really is a couple month time lag. So the recommendation at a state level, okay, is a couple months of fund balance, which would be about 16%. Um, when I look at your expenditures and I look at your cash flow, taking into account the property taxes, the first state aid payment, um, 12 to 15%, um, I believe, is the right number. Um, I would like to say, you know, 15, although I do understand the economic pressure right now, so 12 may be more realistic, but definitely within that range. So I think you're right where you need to be. Okay, thank you. Mari, if I can add, just add to that, are you seeing more districts to meet cash flow needs having to borrow? during that time period? Is it becoming more likely that we will go into that, uh, that particular uh, challenge? Um, many districts do borrow. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a cost to that, to the district. And right, and right. But most of the time when that happens is because they've watched the expenditure side of things and not watch the revenues also. And in those districts that have declining enrollment, um, keeping your expenditures the same even though your revenues are decreasing. And unfortunately, those districts now are facing um, deficits and really struggling because even the borrowing isn't sufficient to work, to get them to a point that they know they're going to have money for payroll. So um, th there's a lot of philosophies about borrowing. Um, some districts are very comfortable with it. Um, others live within their means. And um, 
as an auditor, as an accountant. Um, I believe that living within your means is very important. You're good. John, can I just add that um, it, it's my perception that there's probably more districts that borrow than don't, but I don't have exact data to point that out to you. Mm -hmm. It's never been the history in this district to go down that path because any amount of interest, small as it might be, to bridge um, two months um, that we're referring to from, you know, the, until you can get to the 20th of, of October, it's just wasted money if it doesn't have to be done. There's a cost to the, the borrowing. For On the other hand, there's two numbers that Mari pointed out to us tonight, and one is 15.7 million that's there in fund equity, and I don't want people to get confused by that number because two and a half million of that is restricted. So it's really 13.3 million that we have available to us, or 13.2. Mm -hmm. And based on this last year's budget, we still have to use 10% of that a year if that trend were to continue. And it's projected to be worse than that for this coming school year. So we have to be careful. I know in a lot of people's mind, they hear 13.2 million if they use the right number to begin with. But when they do, that sounds like a lot of money but it's not a lot of money when you're looking at an $80 million expenditure budget. So you have to be very careful on what assumptions you make that would pull us um, into that where we're spending three to four uh, million a year. And the one-time fixes probably have gone away from the incentive dollars to the edgy dollars. Uh, we may get a break on retirement this year uh, that could save the district um, some money, but even that's yet to be determined and somewhat fuzzy at the state level. They just announced, I think on Friday, I got the letter, and Linda was at a conference that they're gonna bump the retirement late, uh, rate at least uh, for the foreseeable future about nine tenths of 1%. Um, but even that's better than the 3% we thought it was going up. So that might save us some money. Who knows what our healthcare costs are gonna be for this coming school year. That can go one way or the other mm -hmm. as a major swing. So. A 13.2 is uh, not a lot if it looks like your burn rate of it is um, mm -hmm. yeah. a good deal of money in the multi-million dollar range on an annual basis. We got off lucky last year and that it was 1.3 million that we had to use of it. Well, that was the reason part for my question, Mari, and, and it was kind of an indirect roundabout way to get to the point where I am of, I'm of, of my comment, and that is that uh, as it stands right now, based on your opinion, uh, it's, a, it's a good place where we're currently at. Um, but um, the unknowns coming out of Lansing are, are, are continue to be a concern of mine. And um, uh, this will be my last uh, audit report I hear from you. Um, but I just would caution and uh, continue to uh, encourage this board and, and those who come after me uh, and Rick uh, to uh, err on the side of caution with respect to how we maneuver as we go forward because um, there is so many uncertainties uh, as I stated, um, in, that lie out there that could affect that fund balance very quickly. And um, just to break it down, um, you know, 55 days out of a 365 calendar or 174-day school calendar year, there's 26 days of funding available to uh, maintain the district. Uh, and we've all been there, at least a number of us who have been on the board for a while have, uh, know what it's like to go into the school year uh, without a budget in Lansing. Uh, now that's changed in the last couple of years, but we've gone well into the school year before we actually knew what the budget would look like and what that would uh, mean to us. So uh, again, my point was a, a kind of a roundabout way to get there, but uh, thank you for your uh, uh, good work and uh, we love hearing that unqualified uh, position with respect to the report. So any other questions, Amari? Thank you again, and Linda, thank you and your staff. Uh, great, great job. And I do have one comment, and I'll be reading it later in the FFO minutes. Uh, Mar Mari did inform us that uh, this was her last audit report for us. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> we're going out the same as, time. <laughs> as I often come to the committee meetings since I work at home in the summer in short sandals and a T-shirt, Mari says she's welcoming the day that she gets to do that. <laughs> and I congratulate her. She will be retiring. And uh, thank you for your service to our district. I'm sure you'll and you'll appreciate your service through the years also. But thank you for... Uh, watching what we're doing and, and keeping us on the straight and narrow for all those years, Mari. You, you will be missed. Um, I hope the, your replacement has the same set of eyes and insights as you have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank the Board of Education um, for the opportunity to serve as your auditor. It has been um, a few years. 
Um, and it has been my pleasure to be associated with a school district that strives to do the best and accepts nothing less than excellence. Thank you. Thank you. Action? Yes, we have, uh, this is an actionable item, so folks, we need a motion to I move to adopt. accept the two audit reports. Support. Moved by Mr. Washman, supported by Dr. Kaminsky. Any further questions or comments? If not, we have a motion on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you, and thank you again. With that, we will move on to Dr. Kaminsky and a CASA study committee report, please. Okay, we met on uh, September 18th. Um, those who were present was myself, uh, uh, Mr. Ellinger, Kathy Ellison, Yvonne Gordon, and uh, Gary Verlindi. Uh, we, uh, we met regarding the, the IB uh, program and uh, had uh, lengthy reports by the IB advisory team. Um, we reviewed the IB history and plans for the future. Uh, Dr. Ellison reminded the group that the IB was first offered in 2007-2008. Uh, since then, we've had four graduating classes uh, with 54 full diplomas earned, 889 students tested, and 4,340 4, students involved in the IB uh, uh, courses. Uh, the IB advisory team was formed last year with the charge of investigating the expansion enhancing communications and supporting sustained funding mechanisms. Three committees, PYP, MYP, DP, are working on these goals. Um, during the meeting, we covered uh, a portion of, um, of the different programs. Uh, the primary years program, or PYP, uh, Linda Lipset and Luann Besniger presented the progress of the primary years program subcommittee. Following last year's work, the subcommittee agreed that implementing a PYP program should be pursued. The process map outlined and proposed timeline for communication, training, implementation, um, and the application process. In addition, the hexagon for PYP was shared. An explanation took place about the six themes, which are transdisciplinary, the learning profile, and the IB attitudes. The six themes included who we are, where we are in place and time, how we express ourselves, how the world works, how we organize ourselves, and sharing the planet. A question and answer period followed the presentation. Uh, on the middle years program, or PYP, um, or MYP rather, um, Randy Shadig reviewed the process of the MYP subcommittee. Uh, Mr. Shadig and Mr. Decker have chaired, or co chaired this committee during the past school year. The committee has researched the MYP program, hosted presentations from individuals from MYP schools, and visited districts that have implemented the MYP program. The group recognizes the value of MYP program but feels the program requires more detailed investigation as it includes grades six through 10 and could require some changes to how the school day is structured. Uh, the subcommittee is expanding this year to include more members and as research will continue. Uh, the diploma program, or DP, uh, Scott Cochran explained that the subcommittee met periodically to tackle overcoming myths and misinformation about the diploma program and to discuss short-term and long-term funding strategies. They increased internal and external communications with parents, student and staff, including presentations at middle school parent nights with middle school students as they chose their classes, talking to ninth grade students as they scheduled, and polling recent graduates about the impact of their IB classes. The committee spoke with community groups and dedicated an, an episode of MPS Today to the IB diploma program. They have found the students are best advocates for the program particularly in talking about how the program has helped them think about their education in a deeper, more holistic, more relevant way, and how being an IB student has given them a leg up in college and career preparation. Uh, we went over a five-year evaluation update for the IB program. Amy Hutchinson described how both high schools will complete a five-year program evaluation for the IB di uh, diploma program. This is essentially a self-reflection on how we're doing with the implementation of, of the diploma program. Uh, Carol Neff and Sarah Pan Pankost, um, IB uh, Diploma Program Coordinators, uh, will oversee this process in their respective buildings. The process involves surveying all of our stakeholders and asking for their input from a variety of teachers and administration, or administrators. The curriculum division will be drafting guidelines for this evaluation in the areas of testing, uh, special needs, language, and academic honesty. A final report due by June 1, 2013, will be completed and sent to the IBO, IB office. 
Um, and then finally, reflections and discussion. Uh, Mr. Ellinger and Dr. Ellison led the CAS committee in a discussion of the reports. Overall, the subcommittee expressed positive comments for these programs, which enabled MPS to move forward uh, toward the vision and mission statements. Uh, data and feedback indicate the MPS students are benefiting from their experiences and are well prepared for college and career. Funding and communication will continue to be addressed. Our next meeting is October 15th. Thank you. Dr. Ellison, do you have anything you would like to add to that? Go ahead. I uh, would just like to make a couple comments because we personally have experienced uh, now with Sarah uh, graduating and she took some of the IB classes and didn't do the diploma program because it didn't work into her schedule, but uh, the benefits that she received not only for being prepared but after taking the tests, uh, she actually earned 12 credits at Michigan State and eliminated some of her biology classes and some of those things. So she just received that uh, quest or the letter from Carol Neff and uh, where they're asking the kids the questions and wanting the feedback and, and her friends as well, some of them that did the diploma program and some that didn't, but just really feeling well prepared when they go off post high school education. So just wanted to put in our personal plug since she's my only one that uh, had the opportunity to, to experience that program, at least in part. So I think we're doing a fantastic job of offering something different for some kids, and it's uh, really helping prepare them very well. So. Well, and else, uh, that's a great segue, because uh, Lynn stole a little bit of my thunder. My daughter uh, did, chose also not to do the diploma, but did uh, take the uh, IV psych and uh, received her certificate, uh, and she was happy to be come home last week from college and was extremely uh, elated by the virtue of the fact that she had successfully completed that course and uh, through the assessment and uh, will be able to apply that course to college and uh, and was very excited and uh, that's that's a big that's a, you know it's a, it's it's more important than we realize to our, our children and our students and uh, you only have to be in your in the house that uh, receives one of those that to see the uh, the true appreciation for all their hard work and the mm -hmm. fact that we have the opportunity in this district to offer that uh, to our students and uh, I think it's a you know I th we're on the right we're on the right path it's just a matter of how we pers um, move, move this to different parts of the district in the future that uh, will make only make it better and and as I know as our parents explore what's best for their kids the middle school parents in particular as their kids are entering the high school um, there's a lot of different venues and or opportunities to find out what IB is about and impact the students. But if you want to, if our parents next spring want a real quick snapshot look, come to the IB graduation that's usually held at the History Center, and you'll see these full diploma kids coming forward with their teachers talking about what they did for their research and what they had to accomplish as part of their IB. That alone, and then you also see the schools they're going to. That alone is very impressive if you just had that. But then go off to the side and speak to a couple of the students and see what they learned and how they felt about the program. It's a nice concentrated opportunity to talk to a lot of these parents, a lot of these kids and their parents about how they experienced the program. Uh, I'm not advocating that that's the only way, but it would be if I was a parent and know what I know now and I was having a kid approach that, I would go to that graduation and start talking to those kids and parents because they're all there at one time in one place and you get to see it in a very concentrated uh, short time frame to help you make your decisions. And if you have a child in that course and you just look at um, some of the um, work that they're doing and the material that they hand in, it's like, are you kidding? And uh, it's, it's really, it's almost surreal. I mean, it's like, it, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's college, you know, uh, you know, it, it's basically what I used to see in college, and, and uh, it's it's pretty pretty intense. But uh, it's amazing how they uh, just step up and are willing, are and able to, to do that work. So it was pretty 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 special moment. So anything else for um, the CASA? If not, we'll move on to an FFO report. Uh, Mr. Mr. Washman will be filling in for Mr. Oli, who is thank you. Tonight. Um, as we heard tonight at our FFO meeting, uh, Maura, Maura McKenzie and Dave Youngstrom from Yo and Yo attended to give us a review of the, a preview of the audit reports. Ms. McKenzie introduced Mr. Youngstrom, who will become our audit partner following Mari's retirement later this year. 
She then reviewed the draft of the annual financial statements and auditor's report of June 30th, 2012. The opinion is unqualified with no findings, uh, as Maury explained during her presentation. A full report was made at our meeting tonight, and following the general presentation, staff excused themselves, as Carl indicated in our meeting tonight, to provide board members present and auditor an opportunity to meet privately. Um, I will share that during that private session, there were nothing, nothing found or no concerns expressed <laughs> to your earlier comment, Carl. Uh, after Ms. Uh, Mr. Valindi discussed the upcoming negotiations of the Midland City Educational Support Personnel Association, MSESPA, the current contract expires on September 30th. Negotiation sessions have been scheduled for October 10th. Cynthia Finney, Director of Human Resources, will, lead, will be the lead negotiator for the district. Mr. Verlindy also shared information with the committee regarding a workers' compensation settlement in a very lengthy case. Money has been reserved and fund balanced in anticipation of this settlement. It will be transferred to the appropriate expense account in the mid-year budget amendment. Mr. Allen provided an update on the planned district-wide survey to be con conducted by Cobalt Community Research later this fall. The survey will take two forms. The first will be a random sampling by U.S. mail of 1,500 registered voters of the district. The second will be via an email blast to all MPS parents. In addition to questions specific to Midland Public Schools, the survey will include items that permit comparison with other schools, industry, and units of government that participate in the American Customer Satisfaction Index evaluation process. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, October 16th at 4 p.m. Thank you. Mrs. Klein. I have a number of gifts for information this evening. They total $7,240.44. Uh, the first is a $500 gift from an anonymous donor for classroom supplies at Siebert. The remaining four gifts are from the H.H. Dow High School Athletic Booster Club, and they represent a number of items that they typically fund at this time of year. So they're what we refer to as recurring gifts, if they look familiar. It's because you have probably seen them in prior years, last year, the year before, possibly the year before that. So we thank our donors. Thank you. Moving on to Human Resources and Mr. Verlindi. Thank you. Uh, the board and staff extend their deepest sympathies to the families of Mr. Norman Dahl, who passed away on September 13th. Mr. Dahl began his uh, MPS teaching career in 1955. He was appointed as principal of Parkdale Elementary in 63, where his career as an elementary principal spanned 26 years. From 1984 <coughs> to 1987, in addition to serving as principal of um, Parkdale, Mr. Dow also served as principal of Plymouth Elementary. Mr. Dow retired in 1989. Also, uh, to the family of Mrs. Ann Hampton, who passed away on September 9th, we uh, send our condolences. Ms. Hampton was a paraprofessional at H.H. Dow High School for 13 years and retired in 1996. And lastly, Mrs. Donna K. Lorton, who passed away September 7th. Mrs. Lorton taught for 35 years at Adams Elementary uh, School, retiring in 1996. And then the following staff member has announced her retirement, effective as of the date indicated, December 22nd, 2012, Sue Ann McMillan, Midland High School Counselor. Thank you. Next on our agenda is uh, information, and all of you have uh, uh, had an opportunity to look at this is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Uh, nine on our, on our agenda is the regular scheduling meetings uh, that are set for the remainder of this, this calendar year. And that moves us to study discussion, and I'll start to my right with Angela. And I don't really think I have much to say tonight. <laughs> OK. So. Well, Actually, I have nothing to say tonight, <laughs> so I will pass it on to John. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks to uh, uh, Mr. Ellinger, Linda Klein, for, and everybody that works on your finance team for a clean audit. I, I think it's really nice, uh, Jerry, some of the comments you brought up about, you know, demonstrating the, the processes and what goes forward being responsible, especially in this economic environment with our school finances and, and what happens to that and the accountability that goes along with that. Um, the uh, couple articles I saw in the uh, Midland Daily News, it was nice to see the article on Wendover High School, kind of a, you know, getting set up in their new uh, home, uh, uh, the former Chippewasi building, it was nice. I think there was also a nice um, uh, article or section that was uh, 50 years for Bullet Creek Elementary, or, not, or Bullet Creek Schools. 
uh, which was uh, nice also as well. And uh, I did, I, I wasn't there for the, the board candidate uh, uh, night, but I did see the write up about that and I thought that was nice uh, to see a lot of our future board candidates having some agreement and consensus on 21st century learning, the iPad initiative and so forth. And it was just, it was great to see that uh, that be something that for their future leaders having uh, some role and interest in, in that going forth in the district. So I was really, really pleased to see that. That's about it. This is big. Not me. Well, I'm, I just want to allude to a few of the activities that are coming up. I always love getting the calendar, but uh, a lot of a lot of exciting um, happenings. And I know this next week is um, Midland High's homecoming, and the following is Dow High. So if you're out and about, there'll be lots of activity amongst the high schools. And um, talk about activity. I was at the Midland High versus Mount Pleasant football game Friday night, which was kind of the kickoff of the whole weekend, it seems like, of really odd, exciting football happenings. So um, that was a very exciting game, and, and it was fun to see the band. It's the first home game that I've been able to get to where the whole, the whole spirit was there. So it really felt like a football Friday, and, and, and that was fun. Uh, I also wanted to uh, give a shout out to uh, especially at the elementary school, our Dibbles volunteers and staff and, and um, teachers that work on the early literacy testing. And uh, we all had to go through new training this year, so that was much appreciated. And, and uh, so I was asked to uh, just comment and, and publicly thank everyone that's involved with that because all those elementary students work individually to go have this testing done, and it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. So thank you to everyone that is involved with that. And um, I uh, picked up Sarah's yearbook the other day and uh, thought, oh, good, that'll give me good reading on my way to East Lansing the other day. I stayed up the whole, I don't know, for hours the night before because I am just forever amazed at those high school yearbooks that the, the kids and their staff put together. And I just would like to thank them and congratulate them for all the hard work that they do in those classes. I don't think they always get recognized for that, but there is a ton of learning and a lot of work that goes in there. And lastly, boy, I'm, I'm feeling dated because Mr. Dahl was my principal at Parkdale. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think it was that long ago, but I guess it was. <laughs> but um, was just it made me think that I remember in sixth grade, Parkdale was so full. And you know, we talk about our, our schools being full that I had sixth grade in the art room at um, Parkdale. And um, I remember him coming in and, and, and wandering around. And uh, so we were using every usable space back in those days as well. So um, he was a very dedicated man. Um, I'd see him around town when I moved back as an adult. So um, to his family, many, many years of um, dedication to MPS. So, so your Parkdale stories are finally safe. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm kind of in Angela's boat this evening. I just was uh, grateful for Ms. McKenzie's presentation. I'm not a real numbers wizard, so when people lay things out in a way that makes sense to me, I get all excited about that. So <laughs> I was real happy with that, and I wish her a very long and happy retirement. Thank you. And I missed last week's meeting, so uh, thanks to everybody for a successful start of the school year. A belated thank you from me, at least. Um, and while I commented earlier while Mari was here, because I wanted to, in terms of while she was here, in terms of the quality of our books and how we, the integrity of the district financially is very high. Um, never lose sight of how we report the numbers is also has high integrity. That unqualified opinion in our statements was very important. The numbers are what the numbers are, and everybody who views them in the public or elsewhere can have confidence in those numbers. And I think that's very important. Um, the, the trust level in this district in terms of being able to trust each other with our financial resources that go to our kids is, is paramount. And you always read the horror stories in, the, in the, any of the papers about fraud here and fraud there and someone doing this and someone doing that and books terribly out of shape and we'll be gone because we don't even know what we got. We are so blessed in Midland that we've never had to deal with that issue, ever, ever. And I hope uh, while I'm on the board, we never, ever have to. And I, I just can't uh, say enough about uh, we take it so for granted, and it's not something to take for granted, that uh, the integrity of our people are there across the board, to people spending money, to people 
recording money. I just love the integrity and uh, can't say enough. With that, uh, you all say it so well, and I, I, I said my piece with respect to Mari and uh, fund balance earlier, but I will I'll just touch briefly on, you know, this board will make some very serious decisions in the coming uh, months with respect to funding. Uh, could be in the form of uh, technology, could be in the form of sinking fund, or, or, or in any combination of the uh, all of the above. And so, uh, trust is a uh, is a big uh, issue with respect to public and and what what they're willing to support. Uh, and as as Jerry uh, just alluded to, is um, without that trust, we won't be successful as a district. And uh, we have demonstrated that uh, all the eight years that I've been on this board time and time again, and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, very pleased with Linda and her staff and the, her ability to uh, uh, manage many, many line items and uh, keep uh, somehow keep a handle on all that because it's, uh, it's, it's quite um, uh, overwhelming if you were to sit down and take a look over her shoulder sometime. But I'm, uh, I, I, I believe that trust is here. And, uh, and with our public, and I think that's critically important as, uh, like I said, in the future, as this district and this board makes decisions as to what we have with respect to needs. Uh, uh, and uh, so I think that that was important. Um, it seems like the school year, uh, on another note, has gone out and started off in a great uh, piece. Uh, uh, in the buildings, uh, I've been in a couple, and they're excited, and uh, things are going well, and uh, athletic teams are doing fantastic, and yeah, it's a uh, it's a good start to the school year. And uh, I, I actually heard Dow High's band from my house the other day, and that's that's quite a quite a way. Mm -hmm. So, um, but uh, it's exciting, and uh, I, I'm 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 really optimistic about the uh, optimism and with respect to what we're seeing in the buildings and we're moving forward so with that uh, mr. Ellinger um, a few items first of all uh, thanks to Lynn for bringing up the uh, Midland High Mount Pleasant football game Friday night if you think about weekend sports in this state that may be the most positive uh, sports story in the state of Michigan <laughs> so uh, it even got noticed for those of you that are uh, free press lovers uh, Nick McCabe wrote a column I think it was in Sunday's paper uh, talked about how special it really was um, in terms of Mount Pleasant's uh, win streak for the number of victories they had in the Saginaw Valley League and then the number of victorious seasons that Midland now has that are more wins than losses. I think it's number 33, uh, if I recall, and I think the uh, state record for winning seasons that are consecutive is 36. So um, I think Midland High is kind of focused on that goal as well. I thought Eric Mechner's uh, comments really irrespective of where you read them in the Midland Daily News or in this column were just outstanding. He kept the focus on kids, on building the program. Uh, if you haven't read it, you should go back and it'll make you feel real proud. The other thing is thanks to uh, Mrs. Betty Chenoweth sitting right there in the front row for the uh, sponsoring the candidate forum. Uh, I believe it was last Thursday night. Uh, she was the moderator on behalf of the American Association for University Women and the League of Women's Voters. I thought you did an outstanding job, Betty. We'll see if the two of the three board candidates that are here in the room with us tonight uh, feel that way and how friendly are they are to you tonight after the meeting. Um, I want to welcome uh, Joyce Perry and Scott McFarland, and thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Um, just a reminder, there is a calendar of events uh, at the points for all the board members, so you're always welcome to attend those events when you can. Our staff and uh, I certainly uh, encourage you to do that because it creates some visibility for all of you. A couple of student recognitions here um, for Dow High School on Saturday. The Dow High robotics team dusted off last year's robot for one last competition at Kettering University in Flint. Dow ended the preliminary competition ranked 11th out of 42 teams and was one of 24 robots picked to continue on to the elimination tournament in the evening. The robot ended up losing two games to one in the quarterfinals, but did walk away with the top score award after posting the highest single game point total in preliminary matches. Dow's 2011-12 uh, robot is now officially retired. <laughs> I don't even know if I want to know what that means. Um, it might be helping out this year's robot. And the team looks forward to its new season, a new robot, and a return to the state tournament in um, April. So congratulations to them. And then the uh, Community Mental Health for Central Michigan brought Dennis um, Legaccio, I guess is how I'd pronounce his name, to the Midland High School to speak to sophomores and juniors on September 24th this morning. 
In this powerful, inspiring presentation, Dennis openly shared his personal story of how he overcame depression and shared his personal story as music and tips for coping with stress, depression, and emotional overload. He's the founder of No Resolve, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting mental health and preventing youth suicide. So I understand that went over very well in that building this morning. And I think that's it for uh, me. We're still early in the school year. We'll get many more reports from buildings of activities and um, charitable efforts like we always report throughout the year, but it's still a little bit um, uh, early. I think we're going into our, what, third or fourth week of school now. It's still quite positive. I started the, the day in a few buildings this morning. You could tell it's still upbeat, but the reality for teachers of now having worked their second full week of school or getting ready to uh, is dawning on them, and they're still just doing a wonderful job. So it's not just our teachers. It's all the employees throughout the building. So we're very proud of them, and the positive start to the school year, I think, is still there. So that's nice to know. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Moved by Dr. Kaminsky, supported by Mr. Washman. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 We are adjourned.